Hi everyone, I hope you're doing well. Another book review and I think this is now going to be it for a while because I've gone through now all of the books that I have purchased this year. Uh, so I don't have any more to show you. This is the mushrooms, how to identify and gather wild mushrooms and other fungi. Now this book, I don't know why it took forever and ever to arrive. It did arrive earlier than it said, so originally it said about two months wait time and then uh, I think it arrived within a month. But the wait was completely worth <laughs> because um, it's a stunning book. So if I didn't have any of the other mushroom books, this would be it. I love the layout, always tell you how much I love the DK books. I have. A really nice collection of them. I think they're the most stunning encyclopedia type of books. It's easy to follow, it's fun to follow, so you don't get bored, it's not very dry to read, but also the layouts, the photography, everything is really beautifully set up and so I just want to show you. Let me just move my crystals a little bit. So let's go into the first page. It's a not new book, in fact, it's quite old, but in my view, it is fantastic. Also for the price, there are some one or two books which are really, really good. And I think they look like they might be even slightly bigger than this one in terms of content, but I'm not entirely sure. Anyways, that book is super expensive. And I believe it's also by Thomas Lasso, who is the expert in mushrooms. But I think he has his own book that he um, published. This one is obviously under DK, but that book is so expensive that, um, no, for me, this one is perfectly fine. So this is the 2013 edition. So I think, was it first published in 96? Wow. So as you can see, long, long time ago. So let's look into the contents. So we have introduction, we have field guide to wild mushrooms, we have Ascomis micota, a range of these mushrooms, then we have Basidomicota. Now, I have no idea what these terms are. So, you basically learn about the cycle of life and all the main features. So we have different shapes of the bodies. By the way, I have a mushroom illustration course. It's called Cozy Watercolor Mushrooms and I'll try to link it up here so you can check out the promo video. But also you can go ahead and check out the course. If you love mushrooms and you love watercolor, it's a great combo. So of course I take a lot of inspiration from looking at the colors, the patterns, the shapes, and I take it into my art. But also I take all of those bits into learning about mushrooms as well. I haven't had time to read a lot of this book because it is quite in-depth, as you can see, but I just love looking into it for illustration purposes and that I have done already quite a few times. So then it will also tell you that those mushrooms are in four different groups. So there's deadly poisonous, there's poisonous, can be edible and edible. So basically those that are edible, they can be cooked and eaten and then of course stay away from the deadly poisonous altogether. Now mushrooms is a thing that really has to be taken seriously. I personally wouldn't trust myself going into a forest somewhere and pick them and then eat them because there are so many false mushrooms that look like the actual fact but are actually poisonous. So the morel mushrooms obviously are um, highly prized within the cooking field but there are also some that are fake and look fairly similar to them but would be poisonous so I would not uh, recommend experimenting with mushrooms at all but I do find them fascinating I do find the color is amazing and whenever I go 
somewhere for a nice uh, walk and I see a mushroom, I always kind of look at it, you know, and yeah, it's, it's an amazing part of our ecosystem. So just to give you an idea, you get loads of beautiful photography close-ups and mostly they're just of the mushrooms so you're not distracted by the entirety of the scene and so I find it quite stunning to look at because they are uh, they don't have like an outline or anything and on the white paper it just makes them pop and you get to see the same mushroom in like a sliced version in a different stages of its maturity etc so beautiful and then like if it would be hard to imagine the size of it or what it looks like then they also have a bit of grass next to it where it typically would be growing and show you also like some mushrooms that grow on barks and um, this one is a very interesting mushroom it's basically it's called green stain and the reason is that it will stain the wood that it grows on so it starts off like that and then it ends up like this also i love how clever they are with the color popping situation where they put a beautiful yellow mushroom which on its own is like sunshine and then they put a turquoise next to it which is just so gorgeous you also get a little kind of digital illustration of how it would grow in nature that's also quite useful. Although it's small, it gives you a good indication. So if you wanted to create like a woodland scene, you can be inspired by the textures and colors of its natural habitat. It also shows you the size of the mushroom in every mushroom. So there's a picture of palm and then in comparison, how large the mushroom would be next to the palm. So these are tiny and then it just goes on and on and on as you can see I have only shown you that much so far so it's a book that is just filled filled with beautiful mushroom pictures and the layout for me personally is fantastic every mushroom gets a tiny bit of text not too much so the focus is really on the mushroom and you can see how they grow next to each other, whether they are like separate or they grow from the same kind of um, like connected in a way. So here you can see the babies are growing out of kind of the same almost base. And of course, there's some really unique ones growing like bells and uh, some grow in the grass, some grow in the bog, and there are also things like, so here, this one is growing off a pine cone, um, and also some really wacky things like, you know, creating uh, zombies out of ants and other insects and sprouting through them. <laughs> That's something I find... Obviously, it's kind of weird and disgusting in one way, but I just find it fascinating. And I think if if people just embrace the knowledge, it's good for your brain, you know? It's good to expand your brain with knowledge rather than just thinking of it, that it's disgusting and, you know, ew, I, I don't want to think about it. Personally, to me, that's a little bit of a boring standpoint in life. I think the more you know... Uh, the more prepared you are for things in life and I would highly recommend to expand your knowledge in different fields and uh, mushroom is another thing like crystals that I really find fascinating so look at that isn't that interesting how it's like blue on the inside once you slice it so it must have something to do with the oxidation so there you go, all of these beautiful mushrooms. I hope you had a good idea of this book. It is beautifully designed and I wouldn't want this to go out of print because it's like old or whatever and I wouldn't have a copy. So 
I don't know why it took so long to, to get it, but I'm glad I did get my copy and I will keep it forever. It's just beautiful. Thank you for watching and I will leave the link for it as always down below for your convenience. It's an affiliate link if you want to support the channel and you consider to purchase this book, then please use uh, the link provided. Thank you so much once again and I will see you next time.